The Evenflow Dual Ride is a stroller and car seat in one. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the four different installation method options and exactly how to do each one step-by-step. The Evenflow Dual Ride is both an infant car seat and a stroller in one. A couple of key things to point out here. The base has an anti-rebound bar feature, which is an added safety feature, so that's pretty cool. The car seat itself, so it can come off of the stroller, meaning you can just use this as a carrier portion. You've got to install it in the base to pop it off. I'm going to show you how to do that, but that's super unique to this car seat stroller combination. The carrier portion also fits in even flow shift strollers. So also, you know, something cool to consider. And you can use European baseless installation routing method with a baseless method. So Let's collapse it to get it installed in the car. So press the handle back down, move it into the carrying position, and then you're gonna squeeze the lever, the bottom one, there's one at the top and one at the bottom, squeeze the bottom one while you lift up on the handles and push the wheels down. Let's go install. There are four different ways you can install the Evenflow Dual Ride. Yes, four. So you can do it with the base, with lower anchor connectors or the vehicle seat belt. And then you can also attach it without the base with the wheels on, European belt path routing, and then also just the carrier, no wheels. I'm gonna take you through every single one. We're gonna start with lower anchor connector installation. So a couple things about vehicle setup, just before you get started installing any car seat for that matter, you want your vehicle seat back to be in its most upright position. You want your vehicle to be on level ground so you can get an accurate read on your recline indicator, which every seat has one of some kind. I'll show you the one on this seat in a minute. I moved the passenger seat up so I had plenty of room to kind of move around. And then you're also gonna to look to make sure that your base is on the vehicle seat the way that it's required to be. This seat allows you to have up to 20% overhang, meaning that the base can hang over the vehicle seat up to 20%. This isn't an issue in this vehicle, but something to be mindful of if you have a vehicle with a short seat pan. So that is the basics for the setup. We're gonna get started by unattaching the lower anchor connectors from their little storage spot, which is here on the side. For this seat, you pull these little red loops to get them out. All right, lower anchor connectors are out. Now I'm gonna keep the seat in this position, the base in this position for a minute. I want you to see the footer. So this is the footer on the bottom of the seat. This is what changes the recline angle once we put the carrier portion in. As a reminder, especially for our newborn babies, recline angle is critically important to keep their airways open, holds their heads back, but also obviously for optimal crash protection. So once you get your base on, you know, flat on your vehicle seat, play with the recline adjustment to see where it needs to be. It's gonna vary based on your vehicle seat slope, which is different for everybody. So the handle here, like I said, makes it go up and down and the little bubble on the recline indicator has to be within the blue range. It's literally labeled level zone and your bubble has to be within that blue range. So get it there. Mine is dead center right now. And we may have to adjust it a little bit after we install because we're gonna tighten things up, but I feel pretty good about starting it here. Let's open up this lock strong arm. This is a really cool feature on this base that's gonna help you tighten up the lower anchor connector strap and the vehicle seatbelt when we get to that installation method. Remember one installation method or the other, not both. When you're using lower anchor connectors, you need to make sure you're attaching them to a designated position in your vehicle. Don't make up where they go. And you can put this seat in any seating position so long as you get a proper installation. I've chosen this side because the thing is heavy. It's a stroller and car seat in one. And so it's going on the passenger side for me for this installation. Grab your lower anchor connector strap, make sure fat side is going up. Pop it in on one side, do the same on the other, making sure there's no twist or turns in the strap. Okay, attached, 
but not tightly installed. We've got to get all this slack out, pull the easy stuff, and then to really get this strap nice and tight, take your tail of your lower anchor connector strap, weave it back through towards your body, and then depress the base down, shimmy it on each side a little bit. And you can see I'm just pulling the tail towards my body. Get that lower anchor connector strap nice and tight around the base. And then with this excess strap, route it back here, out and back under so it's out of the way. Then close your lock strong arm. It's gonna go from red to green on an indicator. So you're gonna know when it's locked in place. If you're having trouble getting this arm down, it's giving you a ton of resistance, then loosen your lower anchor connector strap just a little bit and try it again. The final step is to check for recline indicator that it didn't move, that that bubble is still within that level zone. And it is. Let's do that test for tightness. The base is literally not moving at all. It cannot move more than an inch in any direction. The final step is to put the carrier portion on the base. Let's do the base now with the seatbelt installation. I'm storing the lower anchor connectors so they are out of the way. Putting the base on a flat vehicle seat, making sure that I'm on parallel ground because that's gonna impact the recline indicator on the seat. The vehicle seat back is in its most upright position and we are ready to go. The recline needs to be set initially before you install it. And the way that you do that is by pushing this lever here and you can see the footer goes in and out as I do that. So you're gonna line it up with your particular vehicle seat, push it all the way back against the vehicle seat back, and then get it where the ball is in the level zone, which is indicated on this seat with uh, a blue kind of strip. So you're gonna put it right in that. I'm gonna actually raise it a little more. There we go. Now we're right in the middle. Okay, for seatbelt installation, we are gonna lock the seatbelt, but we also have this lock strong arm here on the seat, which helps a ton with tightening the seatbelt for us, like minimal effort for, for us. Ease of installation with the seatbelt is one of the key features of this base. So it's my preferred method because I don't even have to pull like I do on the lower anchor connector straps. Grab your seatbelt, route it right here on top of this bright blue belt guide both the shoulder belt and lap belt, buckle it in. Now we're just gonna get any of the easy slack out. Now I want you to see what's happening here. So before I pull any of the slack out, the little loop on my seatbelt is getting caught right where the lock strong arm is going to close. So when I tighten it, it's likely gonna move. But if this happens to you once your seatbelt is totally tight, consider shifting the base on your vehicle seat because we can't have that loop or those little convenience buttons that are sometimes on seatbelts that are gonna be getting in the way of closing this lock strong arm. So let's see if it moves out of the way enough when I tighten it. Separate the shoulder belt from the lap belt and then start pushing down on the base. I kind of like to shimmy it on each side Oh yeah, my loop is not getting out of the way. So I'm gonna see if I move my base this way, I'm able to get it out of the lock strong arm. It's now on the side. Sometimes it's that simple. If it's not that simple, you may have to look at a different vehicle seating position or you would install with the lower anchor connectors. But it looks like I was able to make that happen. All right, so now I'm gonna hold that taut and I am going to close the lock strong arm might take a little bit of effort, but if you're getting a ton of resistance, loosen your seatbelt a little bit, you may have over tightened. The indicator changed from red to green, so I know that the lock strong arm is down. My final step is to lock the vehicle seatbelt. I'm pulling it all the way out, making sure I have it, it all the way out, which sometimes means rotating it around. I hear that ratcheting sound, so I know we're in locking mode. Don't over tighten here. You're just locking the belt. If you start pulling up here, you could lift the base off of the vehicle seat and put strain on what's happening in the lock strong arm. So you're just literally locking the belt at this point. So our final steps are to test for tightness. We're gonna do that right here at the belt path. The seat is not moving at all in this case. It can never move more than an inch. When you test it, not in any direction can it move more than an inch. 
And then we're gonna do the final recline check and my bubble is still directly in the center of the level zone. So I know it's good to go there. The final step is we gotta put the carrier on the base. Whether you've installed your base with lower anchor connectors or the vehicle seatbelt, putting the carrier in is the same for each method. Grab your carrier, line it up. You'll hear it click into place and then go ahead and pull up on the handle as well. If you can't release it just by pulling it up, you know that it's nice and secure. And I'm in the US, so I'm allowed to have my handle in any locked position. So I'm going to leave it right here. That's how you put your carrier on your base. This seat also comes with a feature where you can add covers for the wheels if you don't want your wheels to get your vehicle interiors dirty. The third method of installation possible for the Evenflow dual ride is to do it with the carrier and the stroller base. So this is if you're out and around town and you're coming into a vehicle where you don't have your base already secured. The first thing we have to do is to reposition the wheels. So you're gonna push the button here on the side and then your baby's gonna be buckled in this seat. So you're gonna have to be a little bit careful of how you do this. So tip the seat a bit and then you will push the button in again to pop it into the storage position for this installation method. Do it on the other side as well. All right, now we've got the seat set up to install, let's do it. Okay, so I've placed the car seat on a vehicle seat. The vehicle seat back is in the upright position and I'm gonna do an initial check of the recline indicator. So there's a line on the side. It's a blue line there and it says level line. You need to be on parallel ground. So what's interesting for me is based on the vehicle seat slope that I have, I cannot get this seat to be parallel. So you are allowed to use a rolled towel to help you achieve that parallel line. Now, friends, I realize when you're using this option, you probably are out and about. So you may wanna consider bringing like a thicker receiving blanket or something with you so that if you are getting in and out of vehicles in the city, for example, that you have a way to adjust the recline if you need to. So I'm gonna grab that towel, put it here as close to the vehicle seat back as I can. And now I can get my level line in the proper position. The adjustment of the recline angle really isn't like an optional thing that's nice to have. It's especially important for our newborns that don't have neck control. So while I realize it may not be convenient for you to bring along like an extra thick receiving blanket or a towel with you, I would find a way to stuff it in that diaper bag so that we can get this seat at the proper recline so that we can protect your baby's airway and obviously protect them in a crash as well. I'm gonna install with the vehicle seat belt using the European belt routing method, which means that the lap belt is gonna route here, right at the belt guides that are on the side of the seat. Just place the lap belt portion under these guides, lengthen your seat belt so you can buckle it in. And then the shoulder belt portion is going to route around behind the seat. So pull it out until you reach the tab on the back where you slide the shoulder belt in. It's a guide right there for you. My seatbelt is already locked because I had to pull so much of it out to get it around the back of the seat. If yours has not yet locked, pull it out until you hear that retracting noise when you weave it back in. You've gotta have a locked seatbelt for this. So now we have to tighten things up a bit. I am going to put my knee behind the seat to push it in. You can also get up and behind the seat and push in with your hips if that feels better for you. I like to grab the shoulder belt here as close to the buckle as possible and just start pulling up. And then I shimmy the seat a bit with my body. Hold that nice and tight. Keep pulling it up and into the retractor. You may have to do that a couple of times. See, I'm still not quite tight enough. So I am actually gonna climb back here, get behind the seat. I'm gonna push in with my legs and I'm gonna push down on the seat. Obviously your baby's gonna be in here, so you may have to do it not right on top of them, please. But you see, I got some extra slack there. Hold it taut, feed it back up into that retractor. Now let's do the test for tightness again. Okay, much better. I was able to get that extra slack out. I've got to check the level line one final time after I have it nice and tightly installed. It's shifted a bit, 
So I'm gonna shimmy. That's pretty good, I think. I don't want it pretty good though, I want it perfect. Um, and it is, it's actually, it is good to go and it's nice and tight. And this is how you do the European baseless routing for the dual ride. And finally, installation method four for the dual ride. This is with the carrier portion only using a European belt path routing method. If you have just a lap belt or you're unable to get your shoulder belt to be long enough to be the European routing method, there are other options for you. They're in your manual. I'm gonna show you baseless carrier only seat belt European belt path routing method. That is a mouthful. Okay, place your carrier on the vehicle seat, flat on the vehicle seat, vehicle seat back, upright position. You're gonna do your initial adjustments of your level line. So I'm on flat ground, the level line is blue on the side of the carrier, and you want it to be parallel with the ground, which it is right now. That's just a matter of shimmying the seat until you get it where you want it to go. If you can't achieve that recline level line, then you can add a rolled towel to the base of your seat down here. It doesn't appear that I'm going to need it in this vehicle, but we'll do the final check for recline once it's fully installed. So I'm ready here. I'm gonna grab the vehicle seat belt and route the lap belt portion through the belt guides right on the carrier. Remember your little one's gonna be buckled up in the seat when you're doing this, you're gonna buckle that in, went right through the belt guide. Now I'm gonna take the shoulder belt portion and loop it around the back of the seat until it reaches the belt guide right on the back. I'm gonna place the shoulder belt through that guide and then pull it back up into the retractor. Now for me, my seatbelt already locked. I pulled it out far enough that it locked. If it didn't for you, go ahead and lock your vehicle seatbelt. The majority of them lock this way where you pull it out and then you try to get any extra webbing. If you can't, you hear a ratcheting noise, it locks. Check your vehicle manual if you need help with how to lock your vehicle seatbelts. But this one is locked, but it's not tight. The seat is definitely not installed tightly yet. So I just messed up my recline <laughs> line by doing that. Let me shimmy it back in place. Come back here behind the seat a little bit so you can use some of your body to help you with leverage. Separate the shoulder belt from the lap belt and then depress down on the seat. Now again, your baby is in here, so you're not gonna be able to press straight down, which is why I like using either my leg or my upper body to kind of push into the seat to grab that extra slack. You can push here down by the feet, but what's gonna happen is the seat's gonna change and recline, right? We're gonna have to make a major adjustment at the end. So try to really push more from the back of the seat. Grab that slack, wiggle, shake, hold it taut, and pull it in to the retractor with your other hand. Now let's do a little check. Oh, that's pretty good. We got a decent amount out. If you didn't, do it again. Get back in your position, separate, shimmy shake, and weave things back up. Okay, now, because we did a lot of movement with the seat, I was gonna say <laughs> that the recline probably shifted quite a bit. But in this case, I got lucky and it didn't. If it does for you, no problem. Try to wedge your hands where you can kind of just shimmy a little until you get that blue line parallel with the ground. We're nice and tight. We've got the recline at the right angle. That's how you do the European belt path routing method with just the carrier of the dual ride. So how are you feeling? Do you feel confident now that you know the four different ways to install the Evenflow dual ride? I hope so. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, and then please subscribe to the channel. You can see lots more installation videos, as well as all things harnessing, which is also super critical to keeping your kiddo safe in the seat. If you have additional questions about the dual ride, be sure to drop them in the comments below. We will answer them. Let me show you quickly that if you have the carrier portion, I want to reiterate, if you skip this part of the video, that the only way to be able to move it back into stroller mode is the stroller portion, the wheel portion has to be on the base for you to release the carrier by itself, which means you have to put it back on the base in order to make it a car seat stroller combo. So typically your base would be in your vehicle, but for purposes of this, I'm showing it to you here. So let's put the carrier back on 
And now we're going to release the entire stroller carrier portion. So if you're using a base in your car, this is how you would likely be coming out of your car. And then if you're ready to get it back into stroller mode, I'm gonna pop those wheels out. You're gonna change the handle position. You're ready to go.